In this video, we are looking at the average atomic mass practice problems. And number one says rubidium is a soft silvery white metal that has two common isotopes, rubidium 85, which has a mass of 85.0 AMU, and rubidium 87, which has a mass of exactly 87.0 AMU. If the abundance of rubidium 85 is 72.2% and the abundance of rubidium 87 is 27.8%, what is the average atomic mass of rubidium? So here we're given uh, isotope abundance information and we're given the mass values. And so we need to use that abundance data to determine what the average atomic mass of rubidium is. And remember, average atomic mass is a weighted average. So we can't just add up the two masses and divide by two. We have to use the isotope abundance data, the um, percentages, to find the weighted average of the two masses. It will be somewhere, our mass is going to be somewhere between um, rubidium 87's mass, so it's going to be somewhere between 87.0 AMU um, and 85.0 AMU. So it'll be somewhere between 85 and 87, but based on the abundance, it will be skewed in kind of one direction or the other. Um, and just at reading the problem, the more abundant isotope is rubidium 85, so it probably will be skewed somewhat towards 85. It won't be exactly 86. It'll be a little bit closer to 85 because rubidium 85 is the more abundant isotope. But we can figure out the exact average atomic mass uh, by just taking a weighted average. And so when I do these types of problems, what I like to do is organize my information into a table with the first column having the isotope name. So I'm going to put isotope. Um, and in this column, I'm just going to list out the isotopes that I have in the problem. Um, so my first one would be rubidium 85, and I'm going to write this um, in isotope notation like this, instead of putting the 85 as the superscript, uh, rubidium-85. Um, my other one would be rubidium 87. So we'll put RB-87. So that's the first piece of information that goes in my table. The next piece of information that I put in my table um, is my abundance. My abundance. And so we have to refer back to the problem to get those abundances. And those are going to be the percentages because abundance, when I say abundance, it's just short for percent abundance. So I'm looking back at the problem and I need to figure out the percent abundance of rubidium 85. So I'm going to read back um, the two most common isotopes. Rubidium 85 uh, is 85.0 AMU, but that's not the abundance, not a percentage. Ah, here we go. If the abundance of rubidium 85 is 72.2%, so there's my abundance, 72.2%, okay? Uh, and the abundance of rubidium 87 is 27.8%, so I'll put that in, 27.8%, okay? So now I have my abundance. The last thing that goes in my table um, is my mass of each isotope. And this will also be given in the problem. And remember, mass number and atomic mass are not the same thing. Mass number is always a whole number. And atomic mass is not always a whole number. So we need to look for the atomic mass, which is generally going to be given in AMUs. So I'll make a note of that here. The units are going to be AMUs, or atomic mass units. So looking back at the problem, rubidium 85 has a mass of 85.0 AMU. 85.0. And rubidium 87 has a mass of 87.0 AMU. So in this case, the mass number and the uh, atomic mass did happen to be the same, but that won't always be the case. So we have to pay careful attention. All right, so that's all my information from the problem. Now what we need to do is take the weighted average and calculate the average atomic mass. And what we do um, to find the average atomic mass is we first find the mass contributions by multiplying the mass by our percent abundance as a decimal. So we're multiplying our mass, 85.0, by our percent abundance converted to a decimal. And to convert a percentage to a decimal, we need to divide by 100. 
So we need to divide by 100, which is the same thing as moving our decimal point two times to the left. So divide by 100, so my uh, percentage, 72.2%, converted to a decimal is 0 0.722. Okay, so we're going to do 85 times 0.722, so let's come over to our calculator, 85 times 0.722, and that gives us our mass contribution, which is the final column of our table, it is our mass contribution, but this doesn't come from the problem, that's why I'm doing it in a different color, our mass contribution. This doesn't come from the problem, this is something that we're having to calculate. So 85 times 0.722 gave us a mass contribution of 61.37. And then we need to find the mass contribution of rubidium 87. So by doing 87 times the decimal version of 27.8%. So 87 times 0. 278. Come over to our calculator. 87 times 0.278. And that gave us a mass contribution of 24.186. Okay. Now that we have our mass contributions, the final step of this problem is just to add the mass contributions. Um, we don't need to divide it all. We already um, converted our percentages to a decimal. We multiply the mass by the percent abundance to get our mass contribution. The final step is simply to add up the mass contributions. So our final step, we're going to take 61.37 plus 24. 0.186, and that will give us our average atomic mass of rubidium, which should be somewhere between 85 and 87 AMUs. So I'm going to go back to my calculator, I'm going to go back and select each answer, 64.37 plus 24.186 gives us 85.556, 85.556. And of course our units are going to be AMUs because they're still measuring mass. Um, and then last but not least we need to round our answer to the correct number of significant figures. And to do that we look in the problem to determine how many significant figures our given values had. So 87.0 would have three significant figures, 85.0 would have three significant figures as well. So we're going to round to three significant figures in our final answer. We're going to look at the five here to make our determination to round up. So instead of 85.556, our final answer, which I'm going to write over here on the left, will be 85.6, because that rounds up, AMU. And that is our final answer. And we can check to make sure that's reasonable, um, making sure it's between that 85 and 87 that we expected. And it is indeed between those two numbers, so we know that is a reasonable answer. Our next problem. Uranium is used in nuclear reactors, a rare element. Um, we, uranium has three common isotopes, and then it gives us a bunch of abundance data. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and sort this um, into a table format so it's a little easier for us to look at. So the first thing in our table is going to be our isotopes, isotopes, and then we'll do abundance, which I'm going to abbreviate AB abundance, ABN. Whoops, that's probably not enough room actually. Um, let's go ahead and rewrite this. Abundance, um, and then we will do our mass. Okay, so first let's list out our isotopes. We have uh, uranium-234, uranium-234, first on our list. Um, and it says its abundance is 0.01%, so I'll go ahead and fill in its abundance. 0.01%. 
percent. Uh, then we have uranium 235, whose abundance is 0.71 percent, 0.71 percent. And it said we had three isotopes, so I'm going to go ahead and make this longer. And the abundance of uranium 238, there's our third isotope. And its abundance is 99.28 percent. All right, so we've listed out our isotopes, we've, lit, we've found our abundances. Now we just need to find the mass values. It says, what is the average atomic mass of uranium? The mass of U234 is 234.0 AMU, 235, uh, exactly 235 AMU, and uranium-238 is exactly 238 AMU. Um, and let's make sure we write our units in here. There, it says it's an AMUs. All right, next we need to calculate our mass contributions. Oh, we'll undo that real quick. So our last thing in over here is going to be our mass contributions. And to do this, we need to take our mass and multiply by our abundance value as a, as a decimal. So to do that, we need to move the decimal two times to the left. So even though this is, these are already decimals, these are still percentages. So we still have to divide by the hundred by a hundred. We still have to move that decimal two times to the left to convert them into decimal versions of the percentages. And of course, when I have a blank space, I'm going to fill in that zero. So 234 times zero point zero zero. Zero, 01. It's a really tiny, going to be a really small number there. 235, move that decimal twice, times 0 .0071, 0 .0071. Uh, and 238 is going to be multiplied by 0 .0.9928. So we need to do a little bit of math here. 234 times point zero 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 one gives us a really tiny number zero point zero two three four so a very small mass contribution from uranium two thirty four from uranium two thirty five we'll do two thirty five times point zero zero seven one it still gives us a pretty small mass contribution, but not quite as small. 1.6685. And then last we have uranium-238, so we'll do 238 times 0.9928. Ah, and there's the majority of our mass contribution, 200, 236.8. 2864. All right, and we know that our average atomic mass is going to be the sum of our mass contributions. We're going to take these three values, add them up, and the sum of our mass contributions will be our average atomic mass. Let's use our calculator, go back and select that first value, plus the 1.6685, plus the 236. And that gives us a total average atomic mass of, of 237.9783. Um, but of course, we need to round the correct number of significant figures. So we'll look back in our problem for that. We have. Um, let's look at our find our mass values. We always want to look at those masses. We have four significant figures, four significant figures, and four significant figures. So looks like we need four in our answer. We'll keep one, two, three, four, and then we'll look at the seven. That seven's going to make the nine round up to a ten, which will make the seven round up to an eight. So that's kind of a strange rounding. So two hundred and thirty-eight. 
but we do need to put the point zero to show that there is a fourth significant digit in our final answer. And of course our units are AMUs. And there is our final answer. Looking back at the problem, let's make sure it is between our lowest and our highest mass value. Our lowest is 234 and our highest is 238. So it actually is, when we round this value, it actually is our highest mass value. Um, notice our original answer, 237.978, is a little bit less than 238. Um, but when we round it, it comes out to exactly 238, which that's because this uranium-238 is way more abundant than either of the other isotopes. It's n over 99% abundant, so our average atomic mass is skewed um, and weighted towards the mass of uranium-238. In this next problem, we have our uh, five common isotopes, but fortunately, our data is already arranged in a table format for us, which, make, which makes it a little bit easier. So we already have our isotopes listed out, we have our percent abundances, and we have our mass values. So all we need to do is find our mass contributions. So I'm going to make one more column over here. Mass contribution. And that will be our final column of our table. We're going to take these masses and multiply by the percent abundance converted to a decimal. So let's go ahead and convert these to decimals by moving that decimal point two times. 0 0.080. I'm going to put um, our converted values right here in this empty space. 0 0.08. We need to convert 7.8, move that decimal twice, so 0 0.078, 73.4, move that decimal twice, turns into 0 0.734, 5.5%, move that decimal twice, turns into 0 0.055, and then 5.3%, move that decimal twice, turns into 0 0.053. Now that we've converted those percentages to decimals, we can just multiply them by the mass to calculate the mass contribution. Multiplying, we'll put our equal signs over here so we have a space to put our answer just as soon as we make those calculations. So we got a lot of calculator work to do here. So 0 0.08 times 46 gives us a value of 3.68, whoops, you know what, I'm going to actually move this over a little bit to make sure I have space, 3.68 is our mass contribution from titanium-46. For titanium-47, we'll do 0 0.078 times 47.0 AMU, a mass contribution of 3.68. Six, six. For titanium-48, we'll do 0 0.734 times 48.0. That gives us a mass contribution of 35.232. For titanium-49, we'll do 0 0.0. 0 0.055 times 49, which gives us a mass contribution of 2.695. And then last but not least, finally we're to the last one. For titanium 50, we'll do 0 0.053 times 50 which gives us a mass contribution of 2.65. All right, now all we have to do is add up our mass contributions. So we're going to add all these values together, and that will give us our average atomic mass for titanium. So let's use our calculator to do this. Let's go back up and select that very first answer, 3.68 plus We'll go back up, select 3.666 plus 
35.232 plus 2.695 plus 2.65. We have all those, add them up, adds up to 47. 0.923. And then we know our units are going to be AMUs because it's going to be the same as the units on the mass values. But let's look at significant figures. All of our mass values that were given have three significant figures. So our final answer should also have three significant figures. So when we are rounding here, we'll keep first digit, second digit, third digit, and then we'll look at the next digit over to round. That two is going to make the nine stay a nine. It's not going to round up. So our final reported answer should be 47.9 AMU. We can check to make sure that answer is reasonable by making sure it's between our lowest mass, 46, and our highest mass, 50. And it is indeed between those two values, so that is a reasonable answer.